Good morning. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living North Metro. I'm Reverend Michael Torfey. I'm Reverend Valerie Torfey. I'm Sheila Fawson. I'm Greg Fawson. We do the production on the broadcast. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Ernestine Garcia, and I will be doing the readings today. Hello, I'm Paul Lancelot, your musical spirit here for today's service. So we all welcome you and we look forward to this day and celebrating with you. Would you like to do the opening? Ah, so I just invite you to just take a really deep breath as we let go of the busyness of the morning and whatever else might be going on into our lives and just draw that breath down into our body and recognize that that is God breathing us, that God breathes our breaths, the ones that we're aware of, the ones that we are not. God is always right there breathing the breath. We think our thoughts through God. And so I'm just inviting us to just release everything that has gone on before and just be present right here and right now to get whatever is yours to get from this time we spent together today. And so in absolute gratitude for this wonderful rain that is beating our plants and our earth and wetting our heads <laughs> and I'm absolute gratitude for this day for each person present here today I just let it go allow it to be and together we say and so, so it is so it is. is so it is so it's the first Sunday in the month and that means it's fall and civil we're so glad to have you back fall. yes we are what you got for us it's good to be here you who are on the road must have a code that you can live by and so become yourself because the past is just a goodbye teach your children well their father's hell will slowly go by. Feed them on your dream. The one they pick, the one you'll know by. Don't you ever ask them why if they told you you would cry. So just look at them inside And you know they love you Ooh. You know they love you And you of tender years Can't know the fears that your elders grew by and so please help them with your youth they seek the truth before they can die so teach your parents well their children's hell will slowly go your dreams the one they pick the one you'll know by don't you ever ask them why if they told you you would cry so just look at them and sigh and know they Great song. Great beginning. Thank you, it Paul. Is. So the mission of the Center for Spiritual Living North Metro is to create an open, accepting learning environment that recognizes and embraces diversity, 
peaceful resolution to conflict in personal and community relationships and help make the world a better place. So it is. And so it is. So like, in, like us and check in on Facebook at CSL North Metro. Check out our website, cslnorthmetro.org. Um, you can go to contact us and add yourself to the email list and then we'll send out the things that are going on and uh, the links and everything for the service so you make sure you don't miss them. You can also request prayer through the website and we'll pray on it all week. And there's a lot more stuff out there. Oh, it's time for a new blog. But yeah. there's lots and lots of blogs out there that's really good stuff to read. And uh, today's title is The Most Profound Mystery to the World. And the reading is from, I love this book, The 40-Day Mind Fast Soul Feast by Dr. Michael Beckwith. Yes. The doctor. <laughs> yes, it's my turn. And we are going to do the affirmations. The affirmations for the week of June 4th, 2023, written by Stephen Anthony. Please repeat after me. I open myself now to the full presence of spirit. I open myself now to the full presence of spirit. The core of my being is my oneness with God's love and creativity. The core of my being is my oneness with God's love and creativity. I create the life I desire through conscious belief and acceptance. I create the life I desire through conscious belief and acceptance. I am aware of the innate perfection of my existence. I am aware of the innate perfection of my existence. The divine light of all creation shines through my being. The divine light of all creation shines through my being. The universe blesses my life just as my life blesses the universe. The universe blesses my life just as my life blesses the universe. And together we say, and so it is. Okay. Um, as, yeah, as uh, Reverend Valerie said, the reading today is from the book, uh, 40 Day Mind Fast Soul Feast by Dr. Michael Beckwith. Since the beginning of time, the heart of the new thought, ancient wisdom, mystical teaching has revealed that you and I are the sacred sight of God. When you solid, solidly embody the realization that ye are the temple of the living God, you cause the transcendental, transformative, infinite presence to so powerfully move within as you that any seeming contradiction to this truth is forever removed from your consciousness. Don't wait for whatever future circumstances you think represent the ideal conditions for your spiritual enlightenment. Oh no, take the highest vision of Christ consciousness you can hold and present its reality to your consciousness right now. In this instant, allow for the holy sight of the infinite to be your inward sight. Then no longer will you be under the karmic influence of human law. Rather, you will be governed, governed by grace. Then you will begin to fluently articulate the vision of your life in, in, in accordance with spirit's idea of its expression as you. In that instant, the love, purity, joy, wisdom, harmony, beauty, and ecstasy of the universe will be revealed to you by the presence of love itself. Today, withdraw from living in some future fantasy and live right now 
as if the entire universe is conspiring on your behalf, because it is. Carry yourself as if all your needs are met, because it has been so since the beginning of time. And together we say, and so, so it is. is. Whoa, thank you so much. Yeah, that was really powerful to hear. It's like one thing reading it to myself, but it's another thing hearing it back. So thank yeah. you so much for that. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Okay, we got another song for Paul. Yes, we do. We do. Yeah, that was a great reading, part of the uh, profound mystery, I think. Yeah. This song is about taking a peek into the profound mystery. Beyond the five senses I go To the space between thoughts I slip through Backstage of dramatic consequences Behind the sequence Of all events no username, no password, no pin number, no papers to sign. For the cost of transformation, I pay attention to my peace of mind. When I'm inbound, going deep, inbound. Silent reverie, clear and present. Mystery. I find myself not guilty for now I know the truth I've dropped all the charges holding me back I'm just sitting here, free and clear. When I'm inbound, going deep, inbound, going deep. no waiting, no twist of fate, for it all comes down to the first cause where I meditate, for heaven's sake, when I'm inbound, going deep. Inbound Silent Reverie For the most Profound Mystery 
to the world inbound and so it is <laughs> did you just write that no, it, it's an older one. It's on uh, one of my uh, older CDs. Wow, that just that just was was our talk. It was. I was like, okay, we're done now. Yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, I have that. Uh, I know I have that CD. I'm gonna go find it because uh, that was that was really. I mean, I just. Almost buzzing. Yeah. That was really good. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Oops. <laughs> uh, that, um, yeah, that, what Ernestine read in that reading there is just kind of a be the mystery. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, we look forward to your next song, but we're going to do our thing right now. Okay. Thank you so Thank, much. Yes. Oh, that was moving. It really was. You know, unless um, any one of us has reached a state of nirvana or, or enlightenment, uh, we have a lot to unravel in our lives. Um, in that process of unraveling, we get to discover things about ourselves mm -hmm. that are important parts of our journey <clears throat> here on this plane. Um, not only do we um, experience our own unraveling of um, things that are mysteries to ourselves, but we sometimes get to witness other people's unraveling. And that's not always a um, pretty sight, but it is what it is. And it is part of living on this plane that we get to um, take the time through meditation, through prayer work, to allow those unravelings to take place. Mm -hmm. Our minds can get cloudy sometimes, and it's hard to even think of, of anything because the clouds just keep us from moving forward or, or having um, insights or revelations. So it is important that when our minds get cloudy, that we clear them. Buddha says, if you let the water settle, it will become clear. And just, just think of that picture. You've, you've all seen um, maybe a, a bucket of water or a glass of water with some cinnamon in it. And if you let it sit still, it all settles down at the bottom and you can see the clarity of the water. Well, that's the same thing for our lives. If we, if we give energy to whatever's bothering us and, and, and giving energy by worrying, by trying to control things, by trying to, to um, bury things and not, can, and, and not can, or even confront it, then we're, we're, we're shaking that um, glass of water with cinnamons and it cannot get clear. When we sit down and allow the spirit to fill us by knowing the truth of our own being, mm -hmm. then the possibility of clarity can, can rush in. Mm -hmm. And it takes patience, your patience, my patience, to, to practice this, to, to, to rid ourselves of ongoing uh, pains in the butt. <laughs> I'm going to put it that way, because it is a pain to carry something all your life, and and not and not be able to release it, to to let that same thing that's been bothering you for so long, that it almost becomes like a friend, a, a dysfunctional friend, and we don't need to do that, because we get. We get to make the choice to live in the question. And the questions are the mysteries. Questions like, where did I come from? How did I get here? Where will I go to if I go to anywhere? Um, why is this doing, why is this 
doing something to my body. Why, 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 why do I have to deal with that? Why do I get, why do I get to eat and others don't? There's so many questions that we live in and, and we're, we're sincerely wanting answers to them. But in all cases, um, we may not get it. So what do we do in the meantime? Do we continue to just worry and, 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 and feel the, like the victim? Or can we just live in the question, live in the mystery? And that means not non-attachment, not allowing ourselves to give any kind of energy to whatever is bothering us, wherever our concerns are. There's a, um, a quote by a, 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 a poet of long ago by the name of Rainier Maria Minoki. And um, this is it, I'm gonna read it to you. Be patient toward all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. Do not now seek the answer which cannot be given you because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything, live the questions. Now perhaps you will then gradually without noticing it, live along some distant day into the answer. So he's, he's reminding us that we don't always have the need the answer in this very moment. We can live in the question and the question that you, you're wanting to, you want an answer for has to have the room in your consciousness, the room in your heart to be revealed to you. It, once it's revealed, then you live it. And I like, I like that term, living, living the question, because living the question to me is, means just living life, living, living without concern that the universe is against you. Because as Rev. Michael Beckler said, the universe is always for you. It's just you have to allow it. You have to allow it. You have to allow it. Mm -hmm. So to me, the most profound mystery in the world is life itself. Life as me, life as you, life as us. Life as me because there, I don't know all of me. I don't know the, the true self. I have moments of experiencing it. I have moments where I can really live it, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's not always sustainable. It's, it's just the mystery. Life is you because I don't know you because you hardly know yourself. So we, we live in this world of us, of we. And the us and we is the questions that we get to ask and live in, the, in, in those questions. Like, why, if everybody loves peace, why isn't there peace? Why does there have to be things that are going on in the world that aren't for us? Because we're for it. So why can't it be for us, the us of the world, the yous, the yous that are all the yous that I know and all the yous that you know, making up the universal you the you that wants the answers. We, um, we're in this world to change things, but it has to change from ourselves first. We have to be the change we want to see, to quote who? Who said that? Be the change you want to see. Gandhi. Gandhi, yeah, thank you, Kim. <laughs> so, we're, when you embrace the mystery of life, that is your life, that is my life, we're, we're saying, I'm open spirit, come to me, allow me to be me so I can grow and reach and eventually, hopefully, no, knowingly, reach the place of enlightenment because that's what we're here for. 
We're here to enlighten, to be enlightened and to enlighten others. And I, I know I'm putting it like it's an easy thing to do, but if we give ourselves to the spirit, the spirit will never let us down, ever, ever, ever. Mm -hmm. no. So when I was typing up the reading, I was just really attracted to that that quote about ye are the temple. And so uh, I got on the Science of Mind Archives website and I put in temple and I found a little six page book by Ernest Holmes called You Are the Temple. Mm -hmm. And so, I, um, so he starts that book out talking about in the beginning there was God and nothing. And then God creates through word or thought. And so then it talks about in the beginning there was God and the word was God and the word was with God. And so all things, everything, everything, everything is made from God, within God, as God. And so it's kind of, I mean, I know we talk about that all the time, but like wrapping my head around, there's nothing outside of God. So, you know, it's really easy to think of all the pretty things and go, oh, yeah, that's God. Oh, yeah, that's God. Oh, yeah. And then we look at the things that we wouldn't call pretty, the things that we might call ugly and go, that's God? That's God. Because there's no thing outside of God. And so we, we are actually made in the spiritual image and likeness of God and endowed with a creative mind. However, as we're thinking with that creative mind, we're thinking in God, because there's no thing outside of God to be thinking into. Mm -hmm. So we also are here having this physical experience and recognizing that we and you and you and you and and everything, everything we call good, everything we don't call good, it's all God. It's all one thing. There's just, there's not anything outside of us going on. It's all, we are one with the source. And so then the reason I started reading this was because that of that quote, ye are the temple. And so what Ernest has to say about that is that the temple... Is not made with hands, but is internal, eternal in the heavens. And that this temple is within us. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the living God. So that's kind of a big one. Yeah, it's the mystery. It is the mystery. When you think about it, um, saying that we're all one. That's a mystery. How, how can that be so? When I'm having my own separate thoughts, you're having your own separate thoughts. We're not reading each other's minds. I, th I, I really feel that we have that capability to, re to, to hear each other in our minds. But because God knew where we are as ch children of, of it, that we're just too young to have our minds be open for others to read because God knows what goes through our minds and we could talk about destruction in the world. We'd probably all destruct each other if we could enter each other's minds. Well, some people can. So they say. So, um, so the spiritual laws that govern the universe exist at the innermost part of our being. So we have free will and we're able to go out and do the things that we would call the good and the things that we wish we hadn't done and oftentimes guilt ourselves for ever and ever and ever. Like sometimes I think of something I did in grade school and then I find myself guilty for that. <laughs> Like, that was a long time ago. And if we start realizing 
that most of us do the best we know how to do at the time that we do it. Mm -hmm. And we begin to forgive ourselves for all of the errors and the foibles and the, the times that we hurt somebody else's feelings, the time that the thing that we did wasn't the best thing for ourselves. Um, then that makes it a little easier to forgive everybody else for the same stuff that we do, they're doing. And somehow we're thinking, well, you should be perfect and I shouldn't have to put up with that behavior. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't think that that's a, a logical thing that we're thinking, but I do know that sometimes we, I expect more from others than they're capable of giving. That we each have the things that we came here to heal, the things that we came here to overcome. We each have stuff that happened in our childhood that was good for us and helped build us up. But we also have those wounded places from our childhood that, that sometimes we continue to live through until we recognize, oh, I don't have to go there anymore. And yet, even that after we recognize, oh, I don't have to go there anymore, it's kind of easy to fall back in that, that pit. Mm -hmm. It's kind of easy to fall back into that place. It's kind of easy to think, for me, I should always be perfect. I should never make a mistake. I should never do anything wrong. And everything I do should be perfect. Well, obviously, that's not the case. And it was an unrealistic expectation at the time I took it on. It's still an unrealistic expectation and it still lingers. It's still in there like, oh, well, you shouldn't have made that mistake. Oh, and so then I can really beat myself up over those mistakes because I should be perfect. Still, that happened when I was seven years old seven. And I'm still carrying that. So all of the things that we're carrying that we should have, should have, would have, could have done better, that we maybe shouldn't have done, or we should have been a better thing, or we, we can actually just, just take a second and, and, and just pick a thing and release it. That's really, really forgive yourself, let it go, and let it not be a thing anymore. And then we can we can recognize that we are here to have this human experience. We're here as this is this is, thinking of myself as the temple of God. I mean, that's kind of mind blowing for me. And actually taking it in and realizing we're absolutely God's beloved all of the time. Mm. All of the time. Not some of the time. Not only when we're doing what we would call good. All of the time. In every breath and every thought and every action. While we're awake, while we're sleeping all of the time so god isn't taking the list <laughs> I, when when i used to think of god as a little kid it's like he had a white beard and a long robe but he still had that same santa claus list yeah <laughs> let's check in it twice to find out if i was naughty or nice no so i had to go to a priest to be forgiven yeah, I couldn't forgive myself. I I need somebody else outside of myself, and that's the mystery of life. So that's a really weird thing. That so I'm I'm reading a book right now about I don't even know where they live. There are these there's there's this nunnery, and um, there aren't very many nuns left there, and it's a farm and. They do their morning prayers and 
they say something about not calling any living person father because there's only one father and that's God. And so then they have breakfast after that and there are two novices there and they're like, so why should we call our father father? And the, and the I forget what the head of the nun and Reese called me. And she's like, you know, I was wondering, oh, well, that's then. then the priest was going to come visit them and they called the priest father. And it's like, so what's that about? And so I just find it interesting that there are these things that we've been taught that get kind of stuck in there that we get hung up on. And if we, if we take God and we take the male away and we realize that God is more than male and more than female, that God is all there is, that there is no he that has itself attached to God, that, that there is no father that attached itself to God because it's an indwelling presence that we're one with. That it's not that thing out there that's checking the list. We get to come here and put on this body and have this experience because I believe it allows us to work through our stuff. And so we each come in with different things. We each have those different experiences as we grow up to probably to further us along on the reason that we came here, whether those experiences, we call them good or whether we label them bad, they're all opportunities for us to recognize the truth of our being, recognize our oneness with God, recognize that we are the temple of God, that we were absolutely created in God's likeness and image. And so we're a spirit, that's using a mind and having a body. This is from, I'm gonna read this because it's meaningful to me. We are immersed in the presence of God and we have access to all the power there is. Not some of the power, not a piece of the power, not a little of the power, not sometimes, not some days. We have access to all the power there is. We the more have access, it is always with us. It never it never fades away. We are we are the power and because we're using it 24 hours a day. If we're whether we're using it consciously or unconsciously, it's always being used through our life. Um I just want to read this. Um, it's a quote by me, but it just came through me this morning and um I was thankful for it. Anyway, it says we are all different aspects of the same mystery. Mm -hmm. To live peacefully while discovering who we are to each other is the mystery we get to discover. The life mystery is, is the me, is the you, is the we of it all. We are the mystery. What a glorious thing that is. What a glorious, fun way to live life, knowing that every mystery will eventually be revealed and we will grow from it and expand in our our journey towards enlightenment. And there's nothing being held against us. No. Nope. And the universe is only for us. That's right. And the biggest thing that holds us back is our thoughts. So all of the thoughts that we have that hold us back we have the opportunity to, to be present with what we're thinking and just send that thought back into the nothingness from which it came. It's not a real thing. The divine spirit isn't holding anything against us. And we're absolutely whole, perfect, and complete. And so we get to be present with our thoughts and and choose the ones we want to think. And I, I know that the tools that not only science of mind, but um, especially Buddhism and lots of other things, uh, places teach meditation, yoga, um, 
the healing. Healing. And we get to be that presence for ourselves and others. We get to awaken our awareness to the immense um, well we this is like, like a privilege to be a spirit with the body and we get to begin to enjoy that privilege and be present with that privilege and live our lives as the blessing that it is. Mm -hmm. I think we should. You gonna do it? Okay. So just let go of all your thoughts right now and move to the center of your being, which has no location, by the way, because the center is all, everything, is the universe and everything within it. It is parallel universes. It is infinite in its being, for it is infinite through its life, it being God, mm -hmm. God the magnificent, God the master, the builder, the creator of all is that is, was, and ever will be. That same God that is within me, that I am one with, the same God that is Reverend Valerie, that same God that is everyone on this planet, everyone on this planet, everything on this planet. It is, it is the animate and the inanimate. It is the isness and allness. It is grace, it is fullness, it is perfection. It is my life, it is your life eternally. So knowing this truth is so easy to declare the truth for my word has power and it cannot come back void. So I declare for each and every individual that's within the sound of my voice, that right here, right now, you let go of everything that is yes. bothering you. Yes, yes, you yes. turn to the mystery and, and, and embrace it. The mystery that is your life, embrace it, knowing that everything that you need to know will be given to you at the right exact time, at the right exact place for your, for your ongoing awakening to the fullness and the allness of your life. Yes, yes, yes. So whatever it is that's, that may be troubling you, that may, you may have concerns, I ask you to join with me and just be in it and allow it to not have any power over you. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself not to give an energy, yes. but just know that you will, you will rise above it and have the patience to do so. So I send out light and love all across this planet. And I ask you to join me in sending out your light and love across the planet, knowing where there's conflict, there's peace, knowing where there's lack, there's abundance, knowing where there's hurt, there is, there is a release to this hurt. Just say yes, yes. To, to your life. Say yes. yes to God. Say yes to all that is yes. going on in your life. And know that you are divine. You are sacred. You are eternal. And I bless you for being part of my life, being part of this, this center for spiritual living, North Metro. Oh, I'm so grateful. Yes. So grateful to know that this world is complete. So grateful to know that all those that have accepted it will immediately be energized to live their life fully. So grateful for life itself. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And in this sense of deep gratitude, deep thanksgiving, I can now release it into the law, into the love. And together we say, and, and so, so it is. is. Amen. Amen. Aho. Ashe. And let's do it together. Woohoo! Love is but a song we sing, fears the way we die. You can make the mountains ring. 
make the angels cry Though the bird is on the way You may not know why Come on people now Smile on your brother Everybody get together Try to love one another right now Some will come and some will go And we shall surely pass When the one that's left us here Returns for us at last We are but a moment's sunlight Fading in the grass Come on people now Smile on your brother Everybody get together Try to love one another right now If you hear the song I sing you will understand You hold the key to love and fear In your trembling hand Just one key unlocks them both It's there at your command Come on, people now, smile on your brother, everybody get together, try to love one another right now. Come on, people now, smile on your brother, everybody get together, try to love one another right now. Right now. Right now. Yay. That was so good. We're going way back today. Yeah. 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 Taking a trip down uh, memory lane. Yeah. That was great. That was like the 70s. Yeah. 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 Early, early 70s, 70s, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Good time. And we're still here. <laughs> we're still here. We're still rocking. That's right. I didn't think I was going to make it past 30. <laughs> But here I am. So glad, so so grateful for you, Paul. And oh, thank you. And your thank choice you. of songs. It was, thank you. It's been magnificent. Thank you. Okay, we got some business to do. We do. If you want to be part of something that is growing and unfolding, and you want to support it, now's your chance because we are that something. We're here to serve people to um, be a place for you to grow and expand in every way, in, whether it's just coming on Sundays or joining in, uh, us in other activities. We're grateful for you. And if you're grateful for us, then we accept your thanksgiving through your giving. And um, you're going to tell them how to do that? Uh -uh. Yeah, so that information is running across the bottom of your screen, but go to our website, cslnorthmetro.org. And just a little bit down the page, there's a couple of ways to give right there. And you can also use Venmo. And uh, our address is also on the website if you're a person who likes to send checks. And uh, we'd love to see you in person too. So, yes. Yeah. So um, we have a, a little thing we do. We, If you're at home and you're watching on your screen, just Put your palms towards the screen and, and see the energy from your, your, your palms flowing out in, in the direction of this, this symbol of our um, abundance. And repeat after me. I am so very grateful to the spirit of all life. I am so very grateful to the spirit of all life. Grateful that it flows through me with ease and effortlessness. Grateful that it flows through me with ease and effortlessness. From this place of absolute thanksgiving. From this place of absolute thanksgiving. I give from my heart. I give from my heart. Knowing that it touches many beings. Knowing that it touches many beings. And creates healings. And creates healings. For this and so much more. For this and so much more. I say thank you and so it is. I say thank you and so it is. Paul Lancelot.
May God bless and keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always know the truth and see the light surrounding you. May you build a ladder to the stars and climb on every rung. May you stay. Forever young Forever young Forever young May you stay Forever young May you grow up to be righteous May you grow up to be true May you always know the truth And see the light surrounding you May you always be courageous Stand upright and be strong. May you stay forever young. Forever young. to keep from crying. I mean, that just was, that was really so emotional. Uh, that was in the 60s. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. I think it was like 1960. too young to remember. <laughs> That's yeah. right up my alley. <laughs> the young ones. I mean, this is just amazing. Yeah. Can't be so snatching. That's great. Thank you. From Greg and Sheila for the behind the scenes work that you do. It, it keeps getting better and better because I know that now how does. Um, you time us to come in so that we can applaud. <laughs> those, those little things that you keep doing, tweaking, are noticeable. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. Good to hear. Thanks. Yeah. And I appreciate <laughs> that, you, that you keep making those, right. those additions. And thank you for putting the Science of Mind archives on the bottom. 
Oh yeah. Sure. <laughs> that was a big deal too, yeah. And Paul, you look a lot younger. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. You look really good. <laughs> yeah, you lost something. Yeah. Um yeah, I'm I'm, I'm letting, letting the, the temple, temple shine, shine forth, forth, I think, here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't cover it up with a beard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see uh lost the beard and added some hair on top. Well, <laughs> yeah. Hey, beards come and go. <laughs> they do. I'm with you there. <laughs> and delightful. I'm so delightful for all of you and what you do for, for the service every Sunday. Yeah. And I really, really liked the service today. I It was just what I needed to hear. I was holding on to confusion and, oh, you know, just holding on to things I don't want to hold on to. And I was able to release them. And so for that, I am so grateful. Thank you all. Yeah, yeah. really, really good message in combination with the songs. It was a great service. Thanks. That was a wonderful. Everyone. I hope, I hope you all come and join us on Zoom, which River Valley will tell you how to do. Uh, well, there's going to be a, oh, it's in the comments, huh? Oh. The, the Zoom link is in the comments. And oh, also, wow. if you miss it in the comments, it's on our website, cslnorthmetro.org. And then go to the calendar and the Zoom link's right there. So you could just click it and join us. So we'd love to have you join us today. And thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone that participated in the service with us because we couldn't do it without you. Are you coming over, Ernestine? Uh, no, it's raining outside and I have to get ready to send the law. It is raining outside. It's been raining for days. Yes, because I usually <laughs> walk over there. That's true. Yeah, no, it's pouring. It's pouring right now here. Yeah. So we're coming. We'll be on, in, in our, we'll be on, on Zoom. Zoom. Okay. 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 Zoom. So, will you pray us out? Yes. So, return to cinder. Return to cinder. <laughs> cinder. <laughs> That's an old song, too. It is. It is and, and be the cinder of love. Be that cinder of, of happiness and joy. For as you give, you will receive. And I'm so grateful for this time we've got to share together. I'm so grateful for everybody that participated, whether helping the service unfold or just showing up and, and being here with us on the, on the internet or live. We're grateful for life, grateful for all that is given to us, grateful to be awake, aware, yes. and ready for everything life has to give. I, I'm so grateful for the questions that are in my life. So grateful for the answers that come. So grateful for life itself. And in this deep sense of absolute gratitude, I now let go, let God, and allow it to be. Together we say, and, and so, it is. so it is. Happy trails to you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Join us on Zoom. We'll have a See great conversation. Bye. See you on Zoom.